आर यू रेडी फॉर दिस ओ माई गुडनेस Windows 11 running on an Android smartphone looks like we finally did it guys take a look at this beautiful desktop this thing is lot more powerful than you think i mean that is actual windows 11 not a virtual machine not a remote desktop this is running natively on a smartphone and well it can run some pc game titles on your android smartphone we have tested games like gta 5 Triple A game titles like Tomb Raider and also running Cinebench was quite a lot of fun. Well, that was all about the previous video we have showed you. Today in this video, I'm going to take you on adventure of installing Windows 11 on your Android smartphone. We will tackle all the challenges and show you all the detailed steps to install Windows 11. And yes, you can install it right on to your smartphone. So watch this video till the end. So without a further ado, let's get started. You can see the specifications of the phone in Task Manager. It is utilizing Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chipset to power this bad boy. So obviously I'm not lying to you. This is real life. Actually, I'm using OnePlus 6T Android device to run Windows 11. Actually, this is very easy to understand. As you may know, Microsoft does provide ARM version of Windows 11. which you can find on Surface Pro X or any other ARM based PC. Your phone, however, is based on arm processor and due to the fact that Qualcomm is making those same processors both for your phones and PCs few PC driver may be even compatible with your phone so running windows on a smartphone isn't as difficult as you might think <laughs> well now the actual problem comes down to the booting procedure the UEFI but how could you load UEFI and boot into windows on android smartphone hmm Well to clear up the problem let me introduce you the project Renegade this is an open source project that helps you to run your windows or linux natively on your phone they came up with this concept of faking windows ufi as a linux kernel so while booting from your phone it will be like a uh, linux kernel you must be running android os right no i'm running windows 11 alternatively <laughs> With the tools they provide, you may compile your own UEFI by yourself or just find one that works for your particular device. This is the disguised Linux kernel that helps you to boot desktop OS from your Android bootloader. And also they accumulated plenty of useful drivers and modified them so that you can use them for your smartphone, especially Snapdragon 845 platforms. So just in case if you are using Snapdragon 845 chips you may definitely take a look at this project this project Renegade step by step tutorial in the description below uh, now let's get to the process well the setup procedure is sort of a mess you will experience constant crash <laughs> you will experience constant crash blue screen of death and if either of those take place you may need to restart your phone and restart from the very beginning Now before we start let me put one thing clearly this project is not compatible with all the android smartphones currently the phones with snapdragon 845 chipsets are compatible so if you want to use various drivers maybe only oneplus 6 or oneplus 60 can do it at this point of time and this is mainly because qualcomm has launched the snapdragon 850 for pc platforms and the 845 is similar to that so the 845 drivers are better to find and very easy to do also looks like snapdragon 855 platform can also able to install windows but it lacks the driver So in addition to the phone you will also need USB flash drive to store various files and possibly few games as well. Also you'll need to prepare set of keyboard and mouse and with the help of a USB hub you can connect it. There are many USB interfaces so it's very convenient to connect all the peripherals and things you have. Things like headphone jack, network cable you can easily connect that. Now let's take a look at the actual operation. Now first of all of course we must follow the root procedure to unlock the bootloader and talking about the Snapdragon 845 flashing windows there is already a in-depth tutorial for your reference just below the like button of this video it provides all the files you need so do check out that first we need to download the windows on arm image which can be easily downloaded from the UUP dump now if you install windows 11 it must be a insider version as windows 11 already supports 64 bit simulation 
but if you are installing Windows 10, the stable version seems to be only able to simulate 32-bit software. You need to pay close attention to this. Now putting the image in our U-Disk, there are also some points you need to pay attention to. We will surely cover all the points while installing so let's start the process. First of all, you need to partition your hard drive of your mobile phone. Here we will use parted as it is a partition tool. We will copy it into our smartphone and look at the partition information. We have total of 17 partitions. The 17th is the user data partition which is storage of your mobile phone. We will erase it for our use and the files will be deleted. So please note that carefully, you should not have your important data on that. And after the erasing, there will be a lot of free space. We need to use this free space to create new 4 partitions. The first is ESP which is your UEFI partition. The second is PE. We need to install it in PE. Third is Windows partition. The size of this partition is determined totally by your choice. But my phone has capacity of 128GB. So here you can see the partition information above which is divided into 125GB at the most. So once you're done with that, we can proceed further for flashing our phone. So I'm not planning to use my Android so I can Allocate all the 124GB to my windows. It will maximize the space available for the windows. And finally, let's create user data partition, which is the Android storage space. For me, 1GB is enough for the partition. So after formatting these partitions, we can restart TWRP. Once your TWRP is booted up, you can then copy the PE into the phone. Here we plug the U-Disk and use the terminal in TWRP. We are using the TWRP to copy the PE files to the PE partition. And well, after this step, we are about to enter the stage of installing the system. And here is the advanced bootloader. It is started with the UFI file in the project. So we can enter the PE from the beginning of the step. Well, now that we have connected the keyboard and mouse to operate it properly, uh, now it feels magical, right? Have you ever seen this interface on a mobile phone? It's a bit saucy, you know. We already set aside a piece of a space for UFI when we was partitioning. So let's mount the EFI partition to the disk part and then we will use the tool called DISM++ to install the windows. Now, in fact, with this tool, you can launch the Windows image that you have downloaded directly from the hard drive. Well, we won't go through the entire Windows installation process, but let's just wait for the process for a while. Well, okay, seems like it is finished installing the Windows. And even if Windows is installed into our hard disk, after installing the Windows, we need to install the drivers. Now we allocate the driver package downloaded before and select all those and install it. Uh, we have to enter two commands to close the driver signature and wait for a while. And this is it guys. This is the moment of the truth. Let's see. And here we go. Okay, finally. Hey, what? To be honest with you, have you ever seen a blue screen of death on your smartphone? <laughs> that is weird. Now technically, even if your Windows is installed onto your phone, now we will reboot the bootloader and load the UEFI to witness the miracle. Are you ready for this? Oh my goodness. Windows 11 running on an Android smartphone? That is something guys, you have to hit the like for. But well, this is the moment I realize you are celebrating too early. You know, what could go wrong at this point? I mean, we are already running Windows 11. Uh, okay, let's continue to the video. Looks like we finally did it, guys. Take a look at this beautiful desktop. I'm just speechless. Wow, this is so good. We successfully installed Windows 11 system on this phone. It's a little strange to look at the interface vertically, but it feels like small windows device anyways. Now let's turn it horizontally and then zoom in a little bit. Now it feels more comfortable to look at. It's a bit like a windows handheld device, right? And yeah, of course, with a 6.4 inch giant touch screen. 
Oh, take a look at that task manager. It's uh, powered by that Snapdragon 845 native. And what else do we have? Well, wow, do you see that? 8 gigs of RAM. It can be really awesome, maybe a little bit too stronger than your basic computer. And 8 GB of RAM is still left with 5 gigs. Wow, wait a minute. This is a CPU, but I don't see the GPU. Where it is? Oh, well, let's scroll down. Oh damn, where is the GPU? I don't seem to find it in the device manager. This is really strange. I mean, without a GPU, how could you game on it? And I guess after some research, I found out that UFI of the Renegade project has not yet solved the problem of graphics card driver. Now to make the GPU work normally, I can use the UFI made by another big guy. But you know guys, in order to avoid the infringement issues, I will not release the UFI file. If you really want to play, you can do your own research and I believe you can handle it guys. Okay, so now let's go back to the step of installing the system. If you use this UFI, you will have to use another set of drivers. And certainly I have tossed a little bit of those to find out that UFI supports GPU. If you get it working, it is still very difficult to use and don't expect flawless working. Even at the initialization, it does not display anything in the windows and you have to turn off the display panel in the bootloader. However, once booted up, you can normally run the windows and Android does not display in windows. It's, <laughs> it's illogical. It's so anti-human. I'm going into the bootloader now. I'm relying on to the intuition, you know, uh, what it feels like. And I will plug in and load UFI. And guess what? Our GPU is successfully detected. Here you can see. Well, it is not that bad. Well, it seems that there is still hope that we can play some games. And well, talking about the test, we tested lots of games, games like GTA 5, also Tomb Raider and not just games, we also ran Cinebench and Ray Tracing Benchmarks. What? Ray Tracing on a smartphone? And I totally forgot about that Crisis 3. So I won't spoil all the details right here. And if you are interested to see how it can run a PC games on an Android smartphone, well do check out this video right over here in the card also in the description below. For more of such awesome videos, make sure to hit that like, share this video, subscribe to our channel. This is Kedar from How To Guys signing out.